flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and I am standing at the base of Wildflower Hill. Brad Pitt is on our tiller tractor thing. The sun keeps coming out and it makes me squint and I don't like to do that so you'll see these come off and on a lot today. It's one of those fall days. It's uh, about 29, 30 degrees. Um, this is his second time tilling this. It wasn't planning today. Ooh, the sun's really coming out. It's, oh, it's beautiful, it's warm. Ooh. I've got my Atlas gardening gloves on today. I couldn't find my winter gloves. Actually, I think they're a hot mess from digging in the dirt the other day and I haven't cleaned them yet. So he's just doing another pass. I don't know. We're on vacation, we're quarantined, so um, he's just figuring that out. So he just likes to be on the tractor, I think. Really, I think that's just what it is. So he's doing another kill on that. But what I want to talk to you guys about today is over here. I don't know if you can see it, from here, but there are a hundred pink flags. Each pink flag designates a pussy willow that I planted earlier this year. And then there are 25 yellow flags, which are witch hazel. And then there are a hundred blue flags, which designate where I planted a winter berry. Let's go check it out. Okay, oh, <laughs> okay. Wow, 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 wow. This is the first time that I've come down here since I planted these way back in early spring. So I, I, so I knew I wasn't gonna be able to uh, have really weed control down here. So I knew I was gonna lose track of where everything is. So I put a pink flag by every plant. And check this pussy willow out, man. When I planted these, they were eight inches tall. That's it. There's one, two, three, four, five beautiful and they already have the catkins on it for next year. Uh, I'm super excited and all of them have this. And, and to be honest with you, scattered throughout here is dogwood. It's all over the place. It's just one of those naturally growing things. So I probably should start harvesting on that too while I have it, you know? You can see the catkins for next year are already formed. And that's a beautiful thing to see. They're, they're on all of them. I am so excited about the progress that these have made in just a few months. It's probably been, what, this is November 24th. It's been six months since I've been, nope, it's been longer than that. It's been about seven months since they've been in the ground. Okay, so a little bit about pussy willows, obviously part of the willow family. They like to have wet feet, which is why I planted them here. This is an area in the springtime that's basically like a small pond because of all the water that gathers. There's kind of a hill on all sides. It's kind of like a little valley. It's where the water sits. So I already have a lot of established pussy willows in this spot. Uh, they were here since I was a kid and they get very tall. Brad's getting closer with the tractor. I hope it's not interfering with my audio too much. I'm telling you, my eyes are super sensitive. Okay. A lot of the pussy willows here are just so big that they're not really good to cut on. They're old, they're established. Um, so I wanted to put in fresh stuff so that I can cut on it every year. And I want to talk to you guys about just some of the habits of pussy willows because they are just, they, they like want to be cut. The more you cut them, the more they grow. So they like to have wet feet, which is why I have them here. So does winterberry, so does witch hazel. That's why I planted them all right here because I knew in, like this part of my property was not gonna be good for cut flowers. It wasn't gonna be good, good for anything because of the potential flooding. Anytime we get heavy rains, this water will pool in this area and that's okay for pussy willows. That's okay for winterberry and that's okay for witch hazel. So um, this is the reason that I put all of this up here. It's clearly okay for dogwood too. It's all over the place. So let me talk about where I sourced these. These are local plants. I got these from the New York State Department of environmental conservation. They have a plant sale every year and they will sell local natural habitat plants. And the reason that they sell these is because they are good for either a pollinator or wildlife. And I'll tell you right now, wildlife love pussy willow. Uh, ducks will eat the catkins and the catkins are the, the puffy things that get give it the, the pussy willow name, those beautiful little soft um, things that emerge right before the flowers and the leaves start to bud out. So. Those are attracted to ducks. Actually, believe it or not, <laughs> hummingbirds will come and pull the catkins off and use it to make their eeny teeny tiny little nests. And I can't wait to see one in real life. I've never seen a hummingbird nest with my eyes, but I'm always looking for it uh, when the hummingbirds are darting back and forth. Someday I will find it. Who knows, maybe it's in one of these pussy willows down here. 
the ones that are established. I'll show you those in a minute. So um, the pussy willows, look at this one. Look, look how tall it is right now. Like that's how tall it is. And it was like this tall when I put it in the ground. I think it was April, a late April or early May, I put these in the ground. So and you also get really good prices too from the DEC because they're just selling the cuttings. Speaking of cuttings, these are so easy to propagate on your own that if you have someone or if you know a friend who has one, you could just take a pair of your uh, Fiskars or whatever you're using to cut and make an angled cut on a branch that's at least, I don't know, I'd say like 10 to 12 inches long. You could do something like willow trees, you could do even smaller and then put it in a cup of water and within a few weeks it will have roots of its own and then you can plant it in the ground. I kind of want to do that right now to show you guys how quickly it roots, but I don't feel comfortable. It would be a waste of a cutting because I can't put it in the ground right now. It's too cold. It wouldn't have time to establish any roots. So we'll do that in the spring. We'll, we'll show you how the pussy willow will grow roots in a couple of weeks on your counter in a cup of water. So I'm really excited about these. Um, this is something that's one of the first signs of spring. Um, and we definitely can uh, use them in early arrangements. I'm always looking for something to go with my daffodils and my tulips and my hyacinth and all those things that I put in the ground for spring bulbs. So well, here, actually, here's what I've been using. This is called a sensitive fern. It's, hold on. This is a sensitive fern and I have a whole bucket of these in the house that you harvest and it's just a fern that has gone to seed and dried up. And I use these as texture in my arrangements. I forage them from around my property, I swear. I'm not buying this stuff. Guess what? It's like 16 bucks, bucks, 16 bucks. It's 16 bucks on Etsy for like a, a handful of these things. I should probably like harvest all that I can and start selling it on Etsy. They're everywhere. They're literally everywhere. I turn around and I see them, so. That's why I actually had to put the pink flags in because these ferns grow up all over the place and so did the dogwood. The dogwood though, I'm not sure it is good to cut off of. Let me show you. I'm gonna grab one. It's not, it doesn't have, I don't know, do I just trim it so that it only has the, the one? I don't know, it just, it's not as pretty and straight as, as the others, so I don't know. There's dogwood everywhere too. Now this, that's gorgeous. This is a different kind of dogwood with a, like a yellower hue. It's just a different variety. But look, it's turning red towards the top. These are gorgeous. I would cut those today. It's bright. Oh gosh, my hands are getting real cold. Oh, I'm gonna have to go inside in a minute. Oh my God. Like, uh, freezing. Okay, these are the established pussy willows. These are huge. And there are some, like they, it grows off of itself. So there are little offshoots all over the place. But for the most part, these, like maybe we should come through and, and just trim them all down. But they're also for wildlife. So I don't really want to do that. But they can get really tall, really quick. There's still stuff I can cut off of it though. Like they just grow off of each other. Just such a great plant. Ah, I came inside to warm up and my whole camera is fogging up. Oh, is that better? Now it's blurry. Oh, because oh, I put it on um, manual focus when I was trying to get, oh, there we go. It's fogging up again. Oh, anyway, I came in to warm up just a second because my hands are frozen. Here are my winter gloves that I said to you that they're filthy. <laughs> they're filthy. I used it when I was planting the peonies the other day. So I had one more thing I wanted to show you today um, before my lens fogs up again, but it's outside. So give me a minute. Do you see this beautiful piece of beast? This is a corkscrew willow. And I planted this last year. It has the coolest corkscrew branches and a, they're awesome in bouquets and arrangements. And I'm excited I'm gonna start cutting on this one next year. And then you can also propagate this the same way that you can propagate uh, a pussy willow. You have to use, you know, first year growth. Like I would cut this right here. 
and then put it in water and let that root. But also, check out the bottom. So all of these that are coming up from the bottom, I'm gonna cut these in the spring and propagate them and plant more trees. Oh, I have friends coming to see me. Hi, baby. Hi. <laughs> Who came to see me? One of my silky babies. So I'm excited about the corkscrew willow. My lens is still filthy. You wanna get down? You wanna get down? What's your name? So I'm excited about the corkscrew willow. I'm excited about the pussy willows. I'm gonna have to show you the winter berries and the witch hazel another time and talk about those because I just can't tolerate it today. <laughs> it's like the high is 30 and it's before noon, so I don't think that it's reached 30 yet. What is Brad doing? I don't know, what is he doing? He's down here now. Like the wildflower field is way over there. <laughs> and now he's over here. It looks like he's widening the pathway to go to my cousins. So I've told you guys probably a thousand times, this whole property next door, and I'm not gonna show you their house because it's not for me to do so, but their house is a little bit further to the right. That's my cousin's, and then the, the property beyond that is my other cousin Lucas. So um, we have these trails to get to each other's houses, and it looks like he's just widening the trail on the bottom to make it easier for us to get through. <laughs> All the chickens are coming over like they hear my voice and they come running. Hi, sweet babies. Hello. Oh, they're so sweet. Anyway, uh, so we took off the water storage tanks from the trailer and this is where they're gonna sit for the winter. We're keeping the black covers on them and that is for mildew prevention, just to block the water inside. They're empty, we emptied them out. And we'll put them back up on the gutter system early spring, as soon as the snow's gone or maybe even before. As soon as we're, you know, out of the freezing temperatures anyway, so the water gets in there and doesn't freeze and expands and breaks it, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, this is where they are for the winter season. I'm sure my kids are gonna make some sort of fort or something by this. It'll be perfect to collect all the snow, so. Well, I'm gonna get, look at these babies. They all, <laughs> they all come running over. Guys, I didn't throw anything. You want me to throw something? Here. Ooh. Those big brown ones don't love me that much. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me today. We'll see you again soon. Oh, what did you do? Oh, I love you. Hi. Hi, Frizzle Frazzle. Look at this frizz. Look at this Frizzle Frazzle. So awesome. Yes, you are. I almost forgot. So a bunch of you during the lives and on a couple of other videos have asked if you guys could see some fi some footage of me during my reporter days when I was on the news, just local news. No big deal, really not a big deal at all. But some of you guys wanted to see that. So here's a couple clips. John Sturdivant and his brother Mike have been creating snow sculptures for years. For their next project, the brothers plan on building an alligator that's going to be their biggest sculpture yet, even bigger than these bears. On commercial drive in Yorkville, more damage. You can see the United Auto sale sign is destroyed. And over here, at this car, this is where part of the sign landed, causing substantial damage. But that's not all. Some of the debris went as far as the parking lot next door at the car wash, like this S from the United Auto Sales sign. Good evening. The first thing you should know here is that there was no new research done to come up with these results. A group of scientists looked at hundreds of other studies to compile the information. The results, red meat is a probable link to cancer. 